My name is Stephanie Fitzsimmons, and this is my colleague Wendy Shelley. And today we are going to teach you how to do how to measure lumbar rotation with inclinometry. So lumbar rotation consists of the five lumbar vertebrae rotating on each other, and when you rotate your lumbar spine, each of these vertebrae is going to rotate just a little bit, adding up to a total lumbar rotation. Um, it's not a lot in the lumbar spine, maybe five degrees, um, but that's how it works. And some of the tissues that are involved would be, first of all, the vertebrae, the five vertebrae, and there's also the intervertebral discs that are there for shock absorption or in rotation, they're going to have some shear forces placed on them and they're there to help with the articulation so the bone's not rubbing on the bone. And the other important part of lumbar rotation are the facet joints. So for this vertebra has an inferior articular facet, this vertebra has the superior articular facet, and together they form a facet joint that's surrounded by a capsule that is not here on the skeleton. And as you can see, the inferior articular facet is actually facing laterally and the superior articular facet is facing medially. And because of the way these are oriented, you're not gonna get a whole lot of orientation because they're gonna block it when they're trying to rotate. So you only get a little bit as they slide on each other. And that's just the way the lumbar vertebrae was designed for stability. And that's also why you have a, your lumbar rotation is a lot less than what you're gonna get in say your thoracic rotation. So when the vertebra are rotating, I already mentioned that it's going to put some shear forces on the intervertebral discs. It's also going to affect the capsule that's surrounding this. And so on, when it rotates, it's going to, if I'm rotating to the right, this one's going to put, be put on stretch, and this one is going to be slackened. So it'll tighten this capsule a little bit. Another thing that will be... Um, affected if you can turn it to the lateral view is here you have an intervertebral foramen and these represent nerves coming out of the intervertebral foramen and when you rotate on this side you're actually going to make it a little bit smaller and that's fine if everything is normal but if there's a pathology involved say some bony formation or something else you could end up compressing these nerves which would cause a lot of pain and may limit the rotation so that's something to be considering when you're looking at lumbar rotation. So that is a, just a basic summary of what's going on in the biomechanics of lumbar rotation. And so what you need to consider next are what are the indications for why you would want to measure this. And basically if there's something going on in the lower back, it's a lumbar rotation is just a really good um, measure to perform to help you see if anything is limited and see if their rotation is limited as well as to track your progress to see if you're making improvements. And you're not going to get a whole lot because there's, it's not designed to have a lot but it's just one more number that you can add to your documentation to see what's going on as well as to see if you're having progress if, um, in different patients who have things going on with their lower back. Um, contraindications, the main one would be spinal precautions. One of the main spinal precautions is no twisting. So obviously you're not going to ask your patient to rotate their spine because that would break that spinal precaution and put them at risk. And so you have to use other measures to um, see what, figure out what's going on and document um, your treatment. So now my colleague is just going to share with you a little bit about the psychometrics of measuring lumbar rotation. Okay, to reintroduce myself, my name is Lindy Shelley, and I'll be addressing the psychometrics of lumbar rotation of the spine using inclinometry. Most studies look at the entire spine, or the thoracolumbar spine, and use goniometry. Very few studies that we encountered look specifically at the lumbar spine for inclinometry. But what we did find was one study that found that the psychometrics were good to moderate, and that was done by Olin and colleagues in 1992. Okay. All right, we're going to move forward and demonstrate this um, on a real patient. Ellie, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm going to watch my video. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, Mallory, what 
we're going to do today is I'm going to be looking at how much rotation you have in your lower back. Okay. Okay. And to do that, I'm going to be using um, two tools called inclinometers. Okay. okay. So what I'll have you do eventually, I'll demo first, is I'm going to have you um, bend at your hips, mm -hmm. and eventually I'm going to ask you to rotate. Okay. Your shoulders. Okay. So if I could have you um, stand up, we'll go ahead and get started. Sure. Okay. And you can face the wall. Okay. All right. I'm expecting to find about five degrees range of motion, but that may be different for you. So we'll go ahead and take a look. Sure. Okay. The two landmarks you want to use for the inclinometers are S1 and T12. Okay. A good way to find S1 is to start by palpating the PSISs. Okay. All right, Mallory, I'm going to go ahead and search for your vertebrae. Okay. All right. Once you've located your PSISs, um, directly in the middle is S2. Okay. To locate S1, you want to palpate up one vertebra. Once you've located S1, you want to make note of that because that's where you're going to be placing your first inclinometer. All right. To locate T12, you can count up vertebra. So if my thumb is at S1, the next vertebra up, the L5, L4, L3, L2, L1, and finally T12. I'm going to mark my fingers. Okay. T12, going to straddle the first inclinometer over the spinous process of that vertebra. Okay. The second inclinometer is going to go at our other landmark, S1. Okay. Once you have found your landmarks, you want to go ahead and have your patient bend over. So if you would, please, Mallory, will you bend at your hips like I demonstrated earlier today? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason you want to have your patient bend is to avoid your patient compensating by um, side bending at the lumbar spine. All right. So once we have our patient in the, in, the in the test position, you want to go ahead and zero out the inclinometers. And you do this by rotating the dial until it matches up with the red arrow. Okay. Once both inclinometers are at zero, you can have your patient rotate their shoulders. Mallory, if you would please, will you rotate your shoulders as I demonstrated earlier? Sure. Okay. Once the patient is rotated, you want to read both inclinometers and take the difference in the two. So first I'm looking at the inclinometer at S1, and I'm reading it at about four degrees. The inclinometer at, at, at T12, I'm reading at about eight degrees. Okay, so by taking the difference between the two inclinometers, I have four degrees of lumbar rotation. Okay. Mallory, you can go ahead and um, um, move your shoulders to the start position. Okay. Okay. I'm going to re-zero my inclinometers before I look at the other side of Mallory's lumbar rotation. Okay. I'm ready when you're ready, Mallory. All right. Go ahead and rotate to the other side. Okay. Have about eight degrees at S1 and about two degrees at T12. Therefore, it looks like Mallory has about six degrees of rotation at her lumbar spine. Okay, she does have a slight difference in both sides, and that is normal and not something to worry about, but definitely note in your um, 
documentation of the patient's chart. Okay, you can go ahead and stand up, Mallory. Okay, thank you. And that is how you use two inclinometers for a lumbar rotation of the spine.